Welcome back to our YouTube channel. If you are new here, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay updated with our latest content. So you want to get into ethical hacking and cybersecurity, but you're not sure where to start. I feel you. That's why in this video, we're diving into the top 10 hacking project ideas for beginners in 2025. These projects are going to give you the perfect practical experience to build your skills. Whether you're just starting out or you're looking to take your hacking game to the next level, we're going to cover everything from simple port scanning to building a password cracking simulator, all the way to advanced exploit development. It's going to be a wild ride, so buckle up and let's get started. Let's kick things off with a simple port scanner project. It's like knocking on doors to see which ones are open. Use Python's socket module to connect to different ports. Always get permission before scanning systems. Practice on your own devices or a virtual lab. It's a great way to learn network security basics. Next up, we're diving into the world of network sniffing. A network sniffer or packet sniffer is a tool that captures and analyzes network traffic. This means you can see all the data that's being sent and received on your network, which can be super valuable for understanding how networks work and identifying potential security vulnerabilities. One of the most popular tools for network sniffing is Wireshark. Wireshark is a powerful open source packet analyzer that has a bit of a learning curve, but trust me, it's worth it. With Wireshark, you can capture live network traffic, analyze packets in detail, and even filter traffic based on specific protocols or IP addresses. Just like with port scanning, it's crucial to remember that network sniffing should only be done on networks you own or have permission to monitor. Building a basic network sniffer will give you a deeper understanding of how data travels across networks and how different protocols are used. Now that you've got a taste of some basic hacking techniques, it's time to start building your own ethical hacking toolkit. Think of this as your digital Swiss Army knife, equipped with all the tools you need to test and improve the security of your own systems. Your toolkit doesn't have to be anything fancy, especially when you're just starting out. Some essential tools for your toolkit include a good password cracker, a vulnerability scanner, and a network mapping tool. For password cracking, you can check out tools like Hashcat or John the Ripper. These tools use various techniques like brute force attacks and dictionary attacks to try and crack passwords. Vulnerability scanners like OpenVAS and Nexpose can help you identify weaknesses in your systems that attackers could exploit. And for network mapping, Nmap is a classic choice. Remember, building an ethical hacking toolkit is an ongoing process. The key is to keep learning, keep experimenting, and always use your powers for good. Chapter 4. Password Cracking Simulator Let's face it, passwords are everywhere in the digital world. They're the first line of defense for our online accounts, but they're also often the weakest link. But instead of cracking real passwords, which can be illegal and unethical, why not build your own password cracking simulator? This project is all about creating a safe and controlled environment where you can experiment with different password cracking techniques without putting any real accounts at risk. You can start by writing a simple program that generates random passwords or uses a predefined list of common passwords. Then, you can try implementing different cracking methods like brute force attacks, dictionary attacks, or even rainbow table attacks. As you build your simulator, you'll start to understand the strengths and weaknesses of different password types. This knowledge is super valuable for creating strong passwords for your own accounts and for educating others on the importance of good password hygiene. Building a password cracking simulator is a fun and engaging way to learn about password security. Chapter 5. Basic Keylogger Okay, this next project is a bit more advanced, but it's also super interesting and touches on some important ethical considerations. We're talking about building a basic keylogger. Now, before you jump to any conclusions, let me be clear. Keyloggers themselves aren't inherently bad. They can be used for legitimate purposes like monitoring employee activity in corporate environments, with proper consent, of course. Building a basic keylogger involves capturing every keystroke made on a target system and then logging that data to a file or sending it to a remote server. You can use Python or another scripting language to create your keylogger. The key, pun intended, is to figure out a way to run your keylogger in the background without being detected by the user. It's absolutely crucial that you only use your keylogger for ethical and legal purposes like testing the security of your own systems or with the explicit consent of anyone whose keystrokes you're recording. 
Building a basic keylogger is a great way to learn about how keystrokes are captured and processed by operating systems. Chapter 6, Wi-Fi Penetration Testing. Let's be real, Wi-Fi is the lifeblood of our digital world. We use it for everything from browsing the web to streaming our favorite shows to controlling our smart homes. But with all this convenience comes potential security risks. That's where Wi-Fi penetration testing comes in. For this project, you'll need a few things. A wireless adapter that supports monitor mode, which allows you to capture network traffic. A good Wi-Fi hacking suite like Aircrack Ing, and of course your own Wi-Fi network to practice on. Never try to penetrate a network that you don't own or have permission to test, as this is illegal and unethical. With your tools in hand, you can start by scanning for nearby Wi-Fi networks, identifying their security protocols, and attempting to crack passwords using various techniques. Remember, the goal of Wi-Fi penetration testing is to improve the security of your own network. Wi-Fi penetration testing is a challenging but rewarding project that can teach you a lot about wireless security. Chapter 7. Social Engineering Simulator Hold on to your hats because this next project delves into the fascinating world of social engineering. It's not your typical hacking project involving lines of code and technical exploits. Instead, it focuses on the human element of cybersecurity. Social engineering is all about manipulating people into giving up sensitive information. Remember, social engineering should only be used ethically and legally. This project is about understanding how social engineering attacks work. You can create your own social engineering simulator by designing scenarios that mimic real-world attacks. For example, create a fake phishing website and see if you can trick someone into entering their login credentials. The key to a successful social engineering simulator is to be creative and convincing. By understanding these tactics, you can learn to spot and avoid social engineering attacks. Building a social engineering simulator is a fun and eye-opening way to explore cybersecurity. Let's face it, our mobile devices hold a treasure trove of personal information, our emails, contacts, photos, even our financial data. That's why it's more important than ever to make sure our mobile devices are as secure as they can be. This project is all about conducting a thorough security audit of your own mobile device to identify and fix any potential vulnerabilities. Start by taking a close look at your device's settings. Are you running the latest operating system version? Do you have a strong passcode or biometric lock enabled? Have you reviewed the permissions granted to your apps? Next, you can use mobile security tools to dig a little deeper. Remember, mobile device security is an ongoing process, not a one-time event. Conducting a mobile device security audit is a practical and essential project for anyone who owns a smartphone or tablet. Get ready to explore the exciting world of web application security. This project is all about building your own vulnerability scanner to test the security of websites and web applications. Now, before you go scanning random websites on the internet, remember that unauthorized scanning can be illegal and unethical. Always make sure you have permission before scanning any website that you don't own. You can build a basic web vulnerability scanner using Python and libraries like Requests and Beautiful Soup. These libraries allow you to send HTTP requests to websites, parse the HTML responses, and look for common vulnerabilities like cross-site scripting, also known as XSS, and SQL injection. Start by learning about the different types of web vulnerabilities and how they can be exploited. Then focus on building your scanner to identify these vulnerabilities. The key is to continuously learn and improve your scanner's accuracy and effectiveness. Building a web application vulnerability scanner is a challenging but rewarding project that can teach you a lot about web security. All right, we've reached the final and most challenging project on our list, advanced exploit development. This is where things get really interesting, but also where you need to be extra cautious and responsible. Exploit development involves creating code that takes advantage of software vulnerabilities to gain control of a target system. Before even thinking about developing exploits, it's crucial to understand the legal and ethical implications. Developing and using exploits against systems you don't own or have explicit permission to test is illegal and can land you in serious trouble. If you're serious about learning exploit development, start by mastering the fundamentals of computer science, operating systems, and programming languages like C and assembly. Then, 
dive into resources like the exploit database and online security forums to learn about known vulnerabilities and exploit techniques. Remember, exploit development is a complex and constantly evolving field. By understanding how exploits work, you can contribute to making software more secure and protecting systems from malicious attacks. So there you have it, 10 awesome hacking projects for beginners in 2025. Remember, the world of cybersecurity is constantly evolving, so the best way to learn is to get your hands dirty, experiment, and never stop learning. And as always, use your powers for good and hack responsibly. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any future cybersecurity adventures. See you in the next video.